So let's jump right into these questions. Ms. Ashley, can you start by sharing some of the most common mental health challenges among youth and the risk factors that lead to these challenges? So I did have something prepared to speak to you all about, but as I was sitting down eating Chick-fil-A, I'm not gonna say uh, the child's <laughs> name, but I did have a conversation with um, one of the fellow teens about uh, dieting and self-image. And I did express to her that um, sometimes it, sometimes we can be a little hard on ourselves. Um, and sometimes we just minded to have a little bit of self-compassion and um, just kind of embrace self-love. Um, and a part of that is having a self-care routine. So I think um, today I wanna like express to everyone here, um, we do get caught up in a lot of expectations and especially around this time during the academic school year, a lot of us are getting our grades, getting our progress reports. So I wanted to express to you all, we know that we all have expectations, but it is okay to embrace a little self-care routine. And that can be as small as taking a walk, taking a few d deep breaths throughout the day, um, just managing some time for yourself and loving on yourself. Um, and I'm just gonna give you all a few things that I do. Uh, go and get my feet done. Or <laughs> I may, you know, just on a Friday, I'll go to Target and y'all know how ladies do in Target, but be honest, we spend a lot of time there. And that might be too much of self-care. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to share that all with you all. Youth panelists, can you explain in your own words what mental health means to you and what things stress you out daily? Okay. Well, I guess I'll go first. Um, to me, mental health is basically just being aware of your thoughts, being aware of how you feel, not only um, about yourself, but about other things, how you view the world and how you take that in and how you process that for yourself, making sure that you're good in your surroundings, making sure that you're comfortable, making sure that you're calm. That, to me, is the biggest, the biggest thing for mental health. So for me, mental health means regulating my emotions and... When I'm stressed or anything that might be stressing me out, anything that might be stressing me out, um, I do like what you said about your viewpoint. I didn't think of that. But for me, um, stress really just affects a lot of my life. So when I'm stressed, I feel like I can't get anything else done. So my, my number one focus is making sure that I'm not stressed. Well, agreeing with both of them, but to me, mental health is knowing, being aware of how you are feeling and knowing your feelings and expressing it to others and making sure everyone else is okay in the certain situations. Okay. Those were really great answers. Thank you all for that. The next question for the youth panelists. So it's like cramping, and I know that even if I'm not thinking about something and it's not on the forefront of my mind, there's something in the back of my mind that's stressing me out. So I try to figure out what it is and how to deal with it so that feeling in my stomach goes away. Well, mine is less of a physical feeling, and it's more me kind of disassociating with what's around me. When I become stressed or overwhelmed, I've noticed that I'm not really present in conversation or I get more tired easily because I'm just drained. And so stress is less of a physical thing and it's more an isolation, if that makes sense. For me, like when I'm stressed, I actually tend to go to more people and make it seem like I'm always okay knowing that I'm not. So. That was good, okay. 
another question for the youth panelists. In what ways do you see yourself or your friends coping with daily stress? What healthy techniques do you see them use or what about them are unhealthy? Well, the thing that I see most in common with all of my friends and even me, um, and it ties into this age of social media, how we all have access to phones and our own social media accounts, a lot of us have um, private stories where we do little rants. And it's, it's become a really helpful technique, a really helpful tip for all of us just to really get um, the things that stress us out, to talk about it or to get advice on certain things. So I'd say having a group of people that you can talk to or even just a page that you can post on about it and get that advice back has really been helpful for me and a lot of my friends. Do you have something? So for me, um, a big cause of stress in my life and as well as my, a lot of my friends is our schoolwork. So a lot of my friends are stressed about it, so they just continue to pour themselves into their work thinking that it will help them when they're not really acknowledging what the root of the problem is. Sometimes they're just overwhelmed and they need to go and speak to maybe a teacher about pushing back a deadline or if they can get an extension about it. So I know that a lot of my friends and I, we pour ourselves into our work and then when that doesn't work, we just take a nap and see if we can maybe figure out how to deal with it when we wake up. Yeah. Um, I also have something else to add. Is there anybody in here that's artsy like me? Can you raise your hand if you're artsy? Okay. I've noticed that, well, I used to go to Davidson, so a lot of my friends are artsy. And um, I realized that with the rant pages and all that, um, we all kind of de dive deeper into the things that we're interested in. So if um, my dancer friends, they'll go choreograph something or just basically if you're artsy, pouring yourself into your art, it really brings you out of that um, negative space that you're in. And so if you do like to dabble in the arts, I'd say that's a really good thing to try out. With me, I'm mostly like throwing rage into sports, like scratch into sports. Like, for instance, with soccer, I love soccer. Just kicking a ball might just release some of my stress. Football, just throwing it might release some of my stress. All of, like, sports just releases your stress sometimes. The, the next question is for Miss Ashley. So the suicide rate is highest during the mid-teen years. What do you think influences this? What are the signs and symptoms of a teen experiencing suicidal ideas? So a lot of peer pressure definitely does affect our teens. Um, just, I would say, engaging with the wrong crowd, um, lack of support, um, and a few more things. But for the most part, I would suggest to definitely look for a support system or be more open-minded to accepting support. Um, some of us are receptive to having support and some of us feel like if you're getting too much support, it makes you overwhelmed. But if people are looking out for you and people are uh, letting themselves, letting you know that they are worried or you know they want to help you in a certain area, whether it's your academics, whether it is sports, um, sports can be an outlet to let that out, like this young lady said, but then again, if you're not performing as well in sports, that could also be, you know, a, a stressor. So what I would like you all to do is think about the different support systems that you do have around you. Embrace the people who love you. Um, it could be going to church. Um, if you're not as religious, it could be just engaging in activities like this, coming out and being around your peers, talking, um, just socializing, don't isolate yourself. That's like one of the worst things to do. Um, and just being receptive. Um, so, <laughs> so they asked me not to over talk because they know I can get that way. But <laughs> um, I know a few things that we do at the Boys and Girls Club is we do have programs like Healthy Habits. Um, we also offer things like karate, um, dance, cosmetology, different things where kids are actually able to come in and express themselves. So like Mackenzie said, you can use art 
she uses poetry and I know we all heard that beautiful poem earlier and she talked a lot about um, mental health throughout that whole poetry and it makes all of us cry when we hear it. Um, and that is a form of self-care, just coping and just um, finding a way to vent and, and doing it in the healthy way, the most healthiest way possible. So we are not harming ourselves. We are not um, pouring um, negative thoughts into our minds. We are encouraging ourselves and motivating ourselves each step of the way. Thank you. The next few questions are for our youth panelists. So, how have you supported your friends slash peers through challenging times? How would you like to be supported? <laughs> um, I'd say the best thing you can do to support your friends and peers is to one, just listen to them. Whenever they come to you with a problem, don't don't make it seem like it's not a big deal because it's a big deal to them. It's a big deal for them to even trust you to come to you with that information. And so listening to them, having empathy for them and the things that they're saying, comforting them if they want it and not um, overbearing them if they don't want you to. That's the biggest thing that you can do for your friends. And I'd say that's the biggest thing you asked um, personally what could help us. That's the biggest thing for me too. Um, having empathy for the things that I'm saying, but not to coddle the things I'm saying, if that makes sense. If it's a serious issue, listen. Listening goes a really long way. Everybody wants to feel heard, everybody wants to feel seen. And so by you listening to somebody, it really does a lot for them. So for me, again, the stressors in a lot of my friends' lives and in my life is school. So I take the most direct approach and simply help them with what is stressing them. So if it's an essay in English class, I will say, okay, well, I can help you brainstorm what the topic is. I'll help you find some research. And then after that, it's less stressful for you because now you have an idea of what to do. So I kind of just go in and help them with exactly it is that they need help with. So with me, I make it seem like first, like Mackenzie said, you got to listen to them. You have to make sure that they know that you're listening. But also don't make it seem like they are in the wrong and they just come to you with issues because they think that you that you trust them. But you have to know that you can trust the person. You have to feel that in your gut. Like you can't just go up to one person and just say something. You have to actually know that you can trust them. Y'all sound like some good friends. <laughs> Next question. What advice can you give for dealing with challenges while navigating young adulthood? Mm. Um, I'd say the biggest thing that helps me um, look over the challenges in my teenhood is just looking at the bigger picture. There's always, um, there's always a light at the end of your hard time. There's always a triumph after your failure, your failure. Um, there's always something better for you that is going to happen. Looking at the bigger picture can really help you get out of those dark times. Looking at the life that you want for yourself. You don't always want to be down in the dumps. And so thinking about positive things like that really, really can help. So same thing as what Mackenzie said. But for me, I think of it as delayed gratification. So a lot of the stress in my life with my schoolwork is that I know that I'll get into a good career and I'll make good money, which is my goal in, the li in my life, and among other things, but that's one of my main goals. And so I know that to do that, I need to put in, put in the work now, like doing well in school, looking for volunteer opportunities, and putting myself in more extracurriculars and giving back to my community. So I know that if I do this now, it'll make me feel a lot better when I look onto my life in the future. For our last and final question, what are some things that you wish parents or adults knew when it comes to supporting your mental health? Well, I think first, before parents can um, fully and wholeheartedly support their children all the way, you have to first know your child. There are a lot of parents out there that 
believe that they know their child, but if you actually sit down and you talk to us, you actually listen to our point of views, listen to the things that we're saying, the things that we're feeling. You have to know your child before you can support them. Because you don't know what you're supporting if you don't know your child. And so, <laughs> and so um, sitting down, having those hard conversations, having tender conversations with your children, it's, that's the main thing that you can do for your child to one, support them, and then for them to feel supported. Along with what Mackenzie said, you also, like most parents, they always say, back in the days, we did this. You, it's a new generation, so you can't talk about how you were back in the days, because the, these days, it's totally different. I heard a parent say, and we will. So the same way that parents have a lot of roles as a nurse, a teacher, a chef, a chauffeur, all the roles that a parent plays, I think they should sometimes realize that even though we're not adults, we do also have a lot of roles. Students, athletes, um, for us, Boys and Girls Club members. And I think that just because we're children doesn't mean that we're, we don't have all these big things that we're doing. So sometimes washing the dishes or sometimes doing things like that, it's not on the forefront of our mind because we're thinking of all the other things that are on our schedules. Just because they're not on your schedule doesn't mean they're not important to us. Also, um, if I can add one last thing, speak life into your children, please. My parents have been telling me since I was around five that I am the lion amongst the lemmings. If you guys can, can look up what a lemming is if you don't know. But um, speak life into your children. It won't make them big headed. It gives them confidence. It gives them self assurance. It lets them speak power into themselves. You can look in the mirror and know that you are that line amongst the lemmings. So please speak life into your children. That's it. I want to thank all the panelists today. And now let's open up questions to our audience. Do y'all have any questions for our panelists? So I have a question for the panel. Um, I'd like to get each and every one of y'all's opinion, if possible. I'd like to see different perspectives of how, as parents, we can, sometimes we miss the message that, you know, we are trying to give us as well because of the roles and responsibilities we have. Is it possible, and can we uh, get a more direct, hey, I really need help. Can you take time? Um, you know, just the communication from you guys. What do you guys really need from us? How would you like to see that support delivered from us parents? Uh, can I, okay, I want to answer. Yeah. Okay, from what we need from you all as parents is to really just listen. Like, you may be in the middle of doing something, but if we say, hey, mom, or hey, dad, can you really help us? Can you, like, take a few minutes out of your day to actually help us? Even though you may listen while you're doing that, but you're not actually paying attention. You're paying more attention to what you were already doing and not what we're saying. So just to listen, that's all. Were there any other questions? How do you deal with external stressors that you can't control? Okay, so like, um, what if one of my parents, um, like, is sick and has to rest a lot, and you, like, it's your responsibility to help take care of them? Well, for that example specifically, you have to acknowledge the fact that your parents are experiencing life for the first time too. And so they're not going to be perfect in everything. And so if your parent is the cause of your stress, just acknowledge. It's not a parent's life, it's that. Like external. What do you mean? Like factors that you can control, like my mom used to say. Oh, okay. Well, 
I think that's a natural feeling because she is your mother. We have a question on the note card. How did you feel once you noticed you suffered from depression or could not express yourself? Um, if I ever could not express myself, because I feel like, my, again, my calling is to create, if I could not express myself, then I don't know what I would do with my life. And so I feel like if you do get yourself into a depressive state or you can't express yourself to the people that you know, right? I'd say do some self-reflection. Um, take the time to, like I said, nurture on yourself. Begin to find the things that make you feel happy again and then go out and then talk to the people about what you felt and make sure that you don't fall into that state again, if that makes sense, forever ask the question. Anybody have an answer? So I would say that sometimes having a boring routine can make you feel like you can't express yourself. So simply doing something that you don't usually do, like going to the library or to the park to take a picnic by yourself, just doing those things can help you break out of that routine and see if you can't express yourself in this way, maybe you can do it in song or maybe you can do something else. So just go out and take some self-reflection in a, in a different spot than where you usually do and it can spur some more thinking. For me, I do have depression, but most people don't know that because I make it seem like I can overcome my depression. Like I can be the bigger person I can do more than what others can, others see me as doing. So I make it seem like I don't have depression. I make it seem like I can actually do better and overcome my depression. Uh, I have a question. Um. What if you like tell them that you have a problem or tell them about it and then they just try to turn it back on them so it makes it seem worse than what it already is? If you can help it, please don't surround yourself around those kind of people. If you, if you have a problem, right, and the person that you're confiding in turns your situation onto themselves to make it about them, please do not surround yourself with those kind of people. Surround yourself with people that truly care about what you are saying and to where their head isn't so big that your situation doesn't even matter to them. Please, if you can help it, do not surround yourself with those kind of people. What, what if it's your parent? Okay. <laughs> so. If it is your parent that is making you feel this way, I know you can't get, not, you know you can't get rid of your parents. Um, so listen to what they're saying, but take everything they're saying with a grain of salt if they're not listening to you and they're making it about themselves. Uh, please, please. Also, in school you all have guidance counselors. You are, you are able to use your resources if you feel like you're not getting enough support in one area of your life and it is too much, you are able to reach out to different people. Um, when we say support, we don't necessarily mean just support within the home. We mean support all around you. So don't ever limit yourself. So that's what I'm saying when I'm expressing like be receptive to support because you have support all around you. You just have to utilize those resources. The next question we have. Spicy question. <laughs> so lately, it's like I've been so cold-hearted with situations, even in friendships and in my relationship. Is there any advice you can give me? I would say to ask the people who you feel you're being cold-hearted with, like, how you can change, if that makes sense. I don't know. If So if Mackenzie says, hey, I feel recently you've been distant, or I feel that our relationship isn't the same, before, I should say, hey, Mackenzie, how do you think that I can change this? Or what can I change? Or how can I be better? Because you don't know what they're thinking. They might be thinking that you're lacking in this part of the relationship, and you think a totally different factor. Mm -hmm. 
active communication is what they're trying to. <laughs> What to do when you feel like you're not being heard by your parents? She said, what do you do when you feel you are not being heard by your parents? Well, like Miss Ashley said, you can be heard by other people. Make sure you have a support system in your life that will listen and hear you out. It doesn't just have to be your parents. But then also let them know that you're not feeling heard by them. Um, as far as I know, most parents do not want you to feel lonely. They don't want to feel like you cannot come to them. And so, one, find those people that you are hurt by, but two, let your parents know how they're making you feel. And I would say sometimes it helps for an adult to hear something from another adult. They feel that maybe it's not a child's place to say certain things, so if you can maybe talk to another adult who will talk to them about the way that you're feeling, they might be more receptive to it. We have another question. Oh. Okay. Oh. She has a question. Um, could you all give examples when you say not being heard by your parent? Could you define that for this parent? <laughs> okay. One of my examples of not being heard is if I'm trying to get your attention about something that I'm really bothered by and you just seem to brush it off or like, or you, or saying like, girl, you'll be all right, or it's okay, stuff like that, not being hurt. That's what I feel is my definition of not being hurt because you're not seeing me through, you're only seeing it through your point of view, saying that I'll be okay when I'm really not okay. For me is when I'm talking to you and you're doing other things, like, if I'm talking, I want you to have, I want to have your full attention. Like, you could be in the kitchen cooking. I want to have your full attention. <laughs> <laughs> the fish grease going to burn. Oh, oh, I'm going to eat either way. I'll tell you that now. I ain't going to miss no meal. Um. I also say small things like knowing your child's love language because everybody likes to be loved in different ways. Some kids need to hear need to hear you speak life into them. Some kids would rather you hug on them and physically love on them. Some kids feel love in you getting stuff that they like, small things like that. Knowing how your child likes to be loved translates into them being heard, if that makes sense. Okay. Something? okay. Understanding that even if it's a little kid struggle, it still is a struggle in our minds. So a little issue with a friend. Now, you might just be like, well, I've had issues with one of my greatest friends and she's still my friend, you'll get over it. But to us, it feels like the world is ending. Like, you know, we don't have that wisdom that you guys have. So if you can kind of take it with a grain of salt and maybe explain how it's happened in your life, you know, and what the situation came out of, like came to be. So if you guys are still friends or if you guys aren't, wh why is that? What can we prevent happening? Don't just say, well, you know, you have a house over your head and you have this and this, there's bigger issues. Yeah, there's bigger issues. The next question we have on a note card is, how do you separate school and home? Well, yeah, I don't really separate school and home. So I would suggest, again, self-care. Um, setting some time, like just having a schedule, maybe a visual schedule if that's what works for some of you. Um, just having at least, I would say, somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes just to think about your day, reflect. Don't just feel like you need to just come home and just, now if y'all have a overdue project or something, get it done. <laughs> but let's prioritize your time. Um, and I would say definitely use a schedule because you do need to incorporate some downtime. You can't just be going. I'm also thinking about today, like when am I gonna incorporate my downtime? Um, so, and that could be something that you're just thinking about throughout 
the day. Um, everybody's schedule is different. Some of us are doing sports, academics, um, honors classes, all those beautiful things that you guys are engaging in, but if you are not okay, you cannot be okay to support anyone else or anything else, so. So I have like three tips because this is kind of my main thing. So, so for me, one of them is to not do your homework in your room because you lay down on your bed or you sit down on your desk and for me, my room is my safe space. So when I start to bring all that stress into my room, I feel like I'm not safe in there anymore and it just brings me stress. Like I can't sleep because I'm thinking about doing homework there. So another one is also make sure that you're eating. Um, I know a lot of my friends too, we get so caught up in our work that hours go by and we still haven't eaten. So take time for a little snack and then also exercising at the end of the night. So do some yoga right before you go to bed. Helps you kind of just take all that stress out and you sleep a little bit better. Something I wanna say is learn how to manage your time wisely. That's a big factor because of the school I go to. I attend A.R. Johnson, I am a junior, and they pile us with tons, loads of work. We have, I have other activities. I go to the Boys and Girls Club. I'm in a whole bunch of different other clubs and I feel I don't have enough time to get the things that I need done what needs to be done. So I feel you should set standards and set like timers. Hey, I'm, when I get out of school, I'm gonna do this, this, and this, and this. It's like have a planner, plan your day out ahead of time. That's how I feel. Um, something that helps me separate school and home is knowing that I wanna show up as the best version of myself at home that I can. If I'm halfway stressed about a project that's due next week, then that's taking some of my brain power away from playing with my siblings. Or it's taking some of myself away from spending time with my parents. It takes time away from me spending time with myself. And so knowing that I wanna show up as the best version of myself at home for the people that are in the home that I love really helps me not feel stressed at home about school. We have another question on a note card. For me, I like to put myself last and everyone else first or blame myself for everything. What's some things that can help me out of that mindset? I'm also um, a type of person that puts a lot of people first before myself. Um, I feel by doing that, I've caused a lot of stress upon myself because I feel like I'm here for you, you're not here for me, so what does that make me look like? Not saying that it's not good to be there for people, but it's also good to be there for yourself as well. You need to put effort into yourself because at the end of the day, you're only going to have yourself. You, Nobody's going to have yourself like you have yourself. So that's why I say put effort into yourself first, and then you can pertain to everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Another question. Got a question over here. So I know y'all already talked about um, parents not wanting to listen to you, but what if they just ignore you as a whole? Like when you're trying to talk to them, they don't listen to nothing you're saying, and then they tell you they're ignoring you. Like they let you know that they is ignoring you. Go to that outside support system that we were talking about. If your parents, huh? Oh yeah, make sure you have other people that will not ignore you in your life. Yes, he has a question. The question was, how do you deal with social anxiety? So I don't suffer from that, but I would say that it would help if you imagine that everybody else is feeling the same way that you are. That everybody else is just as nervous as you are to go up to talk to you. I do that and it makes me feel like I, I don't have as much to worry about. I can just go and talk to them. They might not be feeling that way, but it just helps you get into the mindset of the, the worst that they can say is no. Okay. Next question. As a parent, how do you support a child that is not optimistic? Well, we have to understand that there's um, the society, right? We're surrounded by negativity all the time, social media, the idea of our friends, you know, not being socially accepted. I remember when I was a kid, right? I went through the same thing you did. 
different time frame, same issues. So we're worried about getting acceptance from our peers, gaining acceptance from our parents, from our teachers, from everybody around us. So at the end of the day, as Antonia said, you have to look at yourself and you have to do a lot of self-talking. Um, my daughter gave me a mirror. This is one tip that I recommend that I use, and I'm old, but I've been using it since my teens. And I stand in front of the mirror every morning, and I hype myself up. I, you know, nobody else is going to be the biggest cheerleader but yourself, right? So if you have to do that, if you can do it in front of a sibling, in front of a mirror, and say, I am great, right? There's a poet up there, right? So I am what I am. This is, I'm a strong woman. I'm intelligent. You is kind, and you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I had to throw that in. But, you know, so you have to do that. And it gets difficult when, again, you're surrounded by all this negativity, but you have, sometimes you just have to dig, dig deep, deep down inside. And the mirror helps. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Look in the mirror. Hey, y'all. Hey, guys. I just, I wanted to mention one thing. I think for the questions when it's like, how do I... Um, talk to my parents or like how do I do this I think it's um because you know we're not always going to have an outside support system of course you can try to find it but at some schools school counselors are really mean sometimes you're not connected with outside family so I think one thing that I've had to learn how to do to talk to my parents because um one of them grew up in a very conservative religious family and the other one grew up with a strict black mother. And so I have a mix of like them being in a habit of not wanting to listen to me. I've had to, we've tried family therapy and it doesn't always work and parents aren't, not, aren't always gonna be open to it. One thing that I like to do is I, I will open it to be, I want to talk to you guys. Are you guys okay with talking? Can we talk later tonight? Do you, are you going to be able to listen to me? How can, and like also, cause sometimes you're like, I think you're completely in the wrong. I think you have to listen to me, but you're not always going to get reception for that. You know, you have to sometimes, <laughs> even if you don't want to, you have to be like, I, I acknowledge and I listen and I will have to compromise with you cause you have to, with, with parents, they're not always gonna wanna listen. So I think that, you know, if you're like, if I don't feel supported, you have to you have to go to them and you have to talk to them and you have to be like, I don't feel supported. Here's some ways you can support me. Does that work? How can I compromise with you? You have to be direct. And if you really feel like you just cannot, then yeah, that's when you try to go to those those outside support systems. But I just wanted to mention it's it's not always possible. How do you deal about bullies? How do you deal with bullies? This is from my little voice in the back. So you definitely don't keep that a secret. That's not something you keep to yourself. Um, if you're getting bullied at school, you definitely need to inform your teacher. Um, when you get home, you definitely let your parents know. And as a kid, um, I think um, when, when I was a kid, I never actually got bullied um, at school or anything, but there was, um, an incident where a, a child did try to bully me outside of school. And I think that's, you know, probably the case with some of us, you know, maybe it's not happening at school, maybe outside of school. And the first thing I did was, actually I went home and told my mom. Um, now, you may get different advice when it comes to confronting it. So I think the biggest thing is to tell an adult. You never try to deal with that on your own. Um, we do have programs that we do with <laughs> bullying and it is pretty big. Um, and I would say a lot of the teens here sitting in front of you have learned so much from it. Um, but creating a space where you are able to say, hey, do you need a friend? Like sometimes just being kind just eliminates a lot of this. Um, and just not reacting with violence or more bullying. Like if you're getting bullied, you don't wanna 
now bully the bullier, if that makes sense. Um, so I think definitely getting an adult involved is definitely your first step because you definitely do not want to deal with that on your own. Okay. Reporting. Also, um, who asked the question back there? Girl, don't let anybody bully you. If they if they are talking bad about you to your face, one, turn away, ignore them. If they're talking bad about you to other people, they can't come to you about it, so it's probably not true. If they're physically bullying you, tell somebody, please. But um, at the end of the day, we're all people. If there's somebody that is bullying you in school, they're more than likely around your age, so they're going through the same things that you are. We're all humans, don't be scared of anybody. Don't let them do that to you, girl. Okay. Uh, you had something? Also to add on, like, make it seem, don't make it seem like they scare you. So I want to thank you to all our panelists today for sharing their knowledge and experiences with us. This was a very, very, very important conversation, and we hope all of you either learn new information or feel, seen, and heard something within the shared, the shared experiences you may have heard with the panelists.